In this video, we're going to show you 25 reasons why your leopard gecko might be refusing food. So it's by far the most common question that I get asked on this YouTube channel is, my leopard gecko's gone off his food, my leopard gecko refuses to eat, my leopard gecko just doesn't want to eat. So I'm going to run through the 25 most common reasons why your leopard gecko could be refusing food. Number one, it's quite simple. You could be feeding your leopard gecko at the wrong type of day. They're a crepusculan species by nature. That meaning they're most active in the dawn and the dusk of the day and through the night. So if you're sat there midday trying to feed a leopard gecko that's probably going to be asleep, if you're going to wake him up, then he's going to be groggy and he won't want to eat. So if you can choose your feeding time to base him with the species actual behaviour, you're only going to get benefits from that. Meaning, you can feed your leopard gecko at 6, 7 o'clock at night or 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. You can do any of those times or through the night, you're going to get a great result. Number two, it could be stress. Now, I've noticed this with all the questions that have come through to me. People have just got their leopard gecko, just put it in their enclosure. For the first few days, there is a very good possibility your leopard gecko won't eat. It's just, that's how it is. It's just going to happen. It's a new environment. It's going to be walking around. It's got to try and find its hot spot, its cold side, its comfortable spot, its water dish, its food bowl. It's got to find everything. It's a big stress. It's a whole new environment. They need some time to adjust to that area. Me personally, my advice on this one is to add food in straight away. I like to add in mealworms in a specific mealworm dish. That way they can use that time, those first few days, exploring the area, trying to find where the food is. If the food's there, they'll know where it's always going to be. That's just my little bit of um, a tip for that one right there. Let me know in the comment section down below what quirky names you've given to your leopard geckos. Let's face it, we all give our leopard geckos really strange names. Me personally, I've got quite human names to be fair. I've got Donna, Millie, Mac, and I've obviously got the three babies just up there. They've not got names yet. I've bred them. They're getting close to ready to rehome to their forever homes. But what names have you given yours? Let me know in the comments down below. Number three, again, revolves around actually just getting your leopard gecko. It could be a new environmental change. You could have just got your leopard gecko, put it into its enclosure. It's going to be stressed. It's, one, it's going to want to hide out. It's a whole new environment. It's scared. It's worried. It's just going to hide away for a few days. That's completely normal. It also goes for if you've just added a new cage mate into that enclosure. It's stressed. It doesn't want to know. It's something new. It's something different. Give it a few days to actually adjust to that difference. Before we move on, guys, I just want to do a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Fantastic Tarantulas. They're based here in the UK. They specialise in breeding the rarer, more exotic species of tarantulas. And they have sent me over an absolutely amazing t shirt. It's not only tarantulas they do, but they do various bits of merchandise, some cups and stuff like that. They've sent me over some stickers to add into our giveaway that we are doing. If you've not yet entered the giveaway, there's not long left on it. I'll link it just there. That's www.fantastictarantulas.com. They will be linked in the description down below. Pop over and say hi because they're on Facebook too. Let's move back onto the video. Number four, it could simply just not be hungry. That's it. If you've had your leopard gecko for a few years, it's never gone off food or whatever, and one day it just refuses food. It just could simply be not hungry. It's as simple as that. Take the food out, do whatever you want to do, go try again the next day or the day after that. It's as simple as that. It could just simply be not hungry. Number five is shedding. Could your leopard gecko be just going into shed? Could it have just come out of shed? If you go in there and it's just going into shed, it's just going to start to go opaque, chances are its body underneath that new skin is compact, it's trapped in there. That's why they need to get out of that new skin, shed that skin so they have a bit more room to breathe, a bit more room for everything really. So it just might not want to eat because it's going into shed, but then on the reverse side of that, after shed, normally nine times out of 10, your leopard gecko will eat its own shed. So it's had a big nutritional filled diet just there in that shed it's full it doesn't want to eat so just take that into consideration if he does refuse around shedding time number six could its food source be too big for it if it, you're if you're giving him five mealworms a day for a baby and then you change it down to five slightly bigger dubia roaches a day is that the same quantity in real life no the dubia roaches are a bit bigger they won't eat all five if they're used to eating five mealworms 
your you could be feeding up a dubia roach that's far too big to and it hangs out above their mouths and they have to crunch it all up and stuff like that that'll take an awful lot longer to get down into their stomach to digest in their stomach chances are it's going to take by the time it comes around to the next feeding for that meal to actually start digesting so just take that into consideration if you are actually feeding meals that are too big number seven is temperatures have you got the correct temperature not only the temperature on the hotspot but have you got a heat gradient of temperature running through the actual enclosure what do i mean by that have you got a hot side and a cold side not a hot spot and the rest of it's room temperature you need a hot side and it tapers down slowly so that it can find its comfortable spot perfectly fine throughout their actual enclosure again these are thermoregulators they have to find them their comfortable spot really to check the temperatures you can pick yourself up one of these these cost less than 10 pounds and they're on my amazon store in the description down below go and check them out having the correct temperature is absolutely vital but along with that we go on to number eight which is the humidity you need to make sure your humidity is perfect in the enclosure too much humidity can give them respiratory infections and other respiratory issues throughout their entire body and you don't want that that on itself will stop them eating number nine now is your setup too big if you've got an enclosure that's far too big and you just put a baby in there he won't know where anything is he will forget where the hot spot is by the time he's got over to the cold side to get his food or to go in his moist hide to shed he would have forgot where his hot spot is and then he panics he starts stressing he goes off his food again and it's a big process like that so if you've got a baby a little two foot enclosure is absolutely perfect until they get to sort of adult size then you can move them into that bigger enclosure then we go on to number 10 which is the substrate if you don't know what substrate is it's basically what you you'd call bedding for a rabbit it's the stuff in the bottom the floor you can use stuff like your calci sand and your play sand and uh, various other arid substrates you see lying around i personally wouldn't recommend calci sand or play sand but if you do run over to jtb reptiles youtube channel i'll link it just there he's done a lot of videos on how calci sand is good and the good benefits of it so it's, it is worth a watch just to increase your own knowledge on that topic but like i say personally i wouldn't use it just because of the risks and all the papers i've read about it being a risk you do whatever you wish to do but the rumours with it being bad, you could get impaction, your animal could ingest some of it, it could get stuck in their stomach and block their stomach and then the food won't go through properly and you'll end up with impaction and just loads of other health issues because of the wrong style of substrate really. I'd love to hear your views on substrate down in the comments down below. Some people use eco earth, some people use calcium sand, some people just use paper towel like I do, some people do a full sand and soil bioactive mix which is something I'm looking into for my bioactive build that I'm doing for my leopard geckos. If you want to see that leopard gecko build make sure you do hit the subscribe button. Before we move on to number 11 let's just have a quick thank you to our Patreon supporters. Huge thank you to the Patreon supporters. You help us keep our animals as highly enriched as possible, as healthy as possible, and it's all thanks to you. I really do hope you enjoy the benefits of being a Patreon, the early access to the videos, the free stickers that we ship out to you guys, and everything else that comes along with it. Thank you. And if you want to check out the Patreon, it's all linked down in the description down below. There's loads of benefits to go along with it. But let's move on to number 11. Do you cohabitate your leopard geckos? Whether you've got two or three or whatever inside your enclosure, some people say it's good, some people say it's bad. It's not the debate. We don't want a debate in the dis in the comments down below. We're just covering this. There is bullying between leopard geckos. Whether it's two females that do bully each other, mine went through a stage where they did bully, and I had to separate them. Um, it could be male hitting sexual maturity a bit too soon, and he's attracted to the female, pushing the female into a position that she's not at the age to do. I had to word that carefully so I didn't get demonetized, but you get the point. There is bullying between various cage mates inside your enclosures. So if that is a problem, just separate them out, two separate enclosures, put a divider in the enclosure. You can do anything like that. Just do your best for these leopard geckos. Now number 12, could it simply be the time of year? Is your animal going into a partial brumation? She's slowing down for the winter. You've got to think, you're, you could be keeping your temperatures absolutely perfect inside that enclosure, but the air pressures that we have in our native surroundings, they drop. The animals can sense that, and that might throw them off the food. So it's just something to keep in mind if your animal has gone off food towards the winter months. But again, with the time of year, could it be closer to the breeding season? Could your female be ovulating? It's very easy to spot an ovulation with just two pink dots underneath the bellies. I'll try and stick a picture up now of an ovulating female of one of mine, 
and you'll be able to see it perfectly fine there. That's one way to check. Sometimes when they're ovulating, their, their minds are just set on ovulation. Their bodies are adjusting to be able to build those follicles inside their actual bodies. So it could be getting close to that time of year. They could be ovulating. That will throw them off their food. That then leads us on to number 14 of eggs. Could your females be laying their eggs? Now, granted, this is only an issue for females. We'll run onto a male issue in a minute, but for females, could they be laying eggs? Could their body be producing eggs? Have they just laid eggs? Are they trying to recover themselves? Are they hiding away for a bit? There's loads of reasons through the breeding season of why your female will go off for food. Just keep that in mind. You can see egg growth inside the females underneath their bellies if that is the case. 15 is for the males. Now, if the males have just been paired with a female or if they can sense a female's pheromones in the actual room, they might go a bit more mentally challenged towards breeding. Food doesn't matter, heat doesn't matter, I want to breed, I'm going to do that. He's a typical man. So that reason, he might go off his food a little bit. We'll run on to a few sorts of illnesses now. We'll go on to number 16, which will be impaction. What is impaction? We have already covered it slightly. Impaction is where they've ingested some foreign bodies or the temperatures are not correct. They need the heat to be able to digest the food that's in the stomach. If they can't digest that food, it just builds up and builds up and blocks their stomach, their esophagus. It could just block any sort of organs inside their stomach and basically struggle to pass it. They won't pass it. It will back up in their stomach. They'll keep eating and eating and just expand and expand it. Not, not, they won't go to the toilet. So keep an eye on your animal going to the toilet. All that sort of stuff is just extremely important. If you do have impaction, it's a vet's visit and a very big vet's bill. So always keep an eye on your temperatures and the food that you are feeding your animal. 17, metabolic bone disease. This is a big one. I want to clear that up right now. Your animal will get metabolic bone disease. His limbs will go extremely bendy, flexible, they'll break easy. His jaw will just not line up properly. He won't be able to eat. He won't have the strength in the jaw to be able to crunch the food, to eat the food. Your animal will get metabolic bone disease unless you use the correct nutrients, vitamins, calcium powders to go on top of your live food to go to your animal. What do I mean by that? Every single meal that you feed to your leopard geckos, make sure you have at least got the correct calcium products on it Get a little bag or something, put some live food in there, dust a bit of calcium and give it a shake about. I use calcium if I have a UVB light. I use calcium with D3 if I don't have a UVB light. But on top of the calcium, you can also add vitamin. This is, these are both the reptile systems, calcium and vitamin, and I would use this every other feed. So for every feed, definite 100% calcium. Every other feed, I'll add on some extra nutrients. These just help your leopard gecko not fall extremely ill. Metabolic bone disease is not reversible. Once your animal has got it, that's it, it's got it. Its lifespan is shortened, it's a lot harder for them. Just make sure you use calcium and vitamins with every single feed that you feed your leopard gecko. Number 18, again with the illnesses, parasites. If you keep your leopard gecko in an unclean, unsanitary area, is going to get parasites. You need to keep on top of the cleanliness. The, the, the only reason it's so common in captivity is because we have everything in a small area. In the wild, they can go for half a mile and go to the toilet and then come back to their sort of home base sort of thing. We have it all in a fairly confined area. In that area, they sleep, they eat, they drink, they poop. If you leave any extra live food in there, any extra crickets or something like that, that could pass parasites on. So once you've fed them, get the food out, once they've gone to the toilet, get that out, you'll never have to worry about parasites again. Number 19, bacterial infections. I swear to God I've missed the number out here. In the comments, let me know if I have. Number 19, bacterial infections. That normally comes from ungut loaded live food and bad water. So keep your water nice and clean and fresh every day. Give them a decent, give your live food a decent gut load. If you don't know what gut load is, that's you feed your live food a really healthy diet, so your live food is really healthy to then give to your animal. The gut load that I've started to use is the new Reptile Systems insect food. Packed full of superfoods and does the job perfectly. Number 20, back over to the gut load. If you've never gut loaded your live food before, chances are your live food has never been 
fully enriched with the correct nutrients and vitamins and just everything inside that bug that's going to benefit your animal. So if you haven't started gut loading before, start now. It's only going to benefit your reptile. These three tubs, as I've said in a previous video, are going to save your animals' lives. These are the reptile systems a la carte range. That's calcium, vitamin, and insect food. Number 21, have you ever thought that your leopard gecko might not just simply like that one item of food? That's as simple as that. Granted, in captivity, we need, as responsible reptile owners, we need to give as much variety as possible to our animals. Each individual live food has different nutritional values, different fat contents, different moisture contents, everything. So if you can give your leopard gecko everything, bonus. But he might just not like that one live food. Maybe he's bored of that one live food. Maybe that's the only live food you've given him. If he's gone off mealworms and you've only ever fed him meal, try him on something else. He might actually really like the chase of chasing a cricket round. It's added enrichment and it's going to benefit him in the long run. 22 is, is your leopard gecko addicted to wax worms? Yes, believe it or not, that is actually a thing. I had that exact thing happen with my bearded dragon. I fed him a few wax worms, then he totally point blank refused everything else except for wax worms. Why is that so bad for your leopard gecko? Well, wax worms are just basically fat. That's all they are. They've got a great amount of moisture inside them, but they are just fat. There's not much else inside them. It could just basically fill your leopard gecko full of gooey fat. It could constrict around the organs. You all know the downsides of having too much fat in our diets, and we don't want that for our reptiles. The best way to get your leopard gecko off waxworms and back onto his normal food. Now, if you've been trying to transition him back off them for a while, just keep doing that for a bit, slowly and slowly reducing all waxworms. If it's still not working, just point blank refuse, no more waxworms. He will eventually go back onto his food. In the wild, these can go months without food. So don't worry if it takes a week of no food for him to actually start taking mealworms again. Once he starts taking mealworms again, you're, you're sorted, you're perfect. Then I start adding something else and something else. Just don't go back to your waxworms. Number 22 is, is your leopard gecko transitioning from a baby to a sub-adult? Is, you've gone from a baby feeding every single day. The sub-adults don't feed every day. Every other day, maybe, as an adult, three times a week, that sort of thing. So it could just simply be a transition period from there. If you notice that happening, just change the way you feed, the routine that you feed your leopard gecko. They might simply just not like the way you're feeding them. This is number 23. Are you tongue feeding your leopard geckos? That's where we've got a big pair of tongs. We've got a live food in the middle just there. Pinch it and try and feed it. They might not like that. They might get scared of the tongs. The simple way around that is just to, you can try different methods of feeding. You can try it in a bowl. You can try just chucking some crickets in. You can try loads of other ways of just giving them the food. See whichever way they prefer, what time they prefer, how they prefer, and just go from there. And then we need to look down into the lighting. This is number 24. It, have you got UVB lighting? Have you got direct sunlight going into your enclosure? Anything along those lines? Is your leopard gecko an albino? Has it got sensitive eyes? Me personally, I've got a blazing blizzard leopard gecko. She's not an albino, she doesn't have sensitive eyes, but as soon as she goes into natural daylight, you can see her going, have you ever come out of the cinema in the middle of, of the day and as soon as you've gone into the natural light, you're oh God, it's bright out here. It really isn't bright. It's just your eyes have got used to the dark, just like theirs. Their eyes got used to being in a hide in the dark and then they strap out into the dark and they're all like this. So maybe they just simply can't see the live food. There's a few things you can do to combat this. You can tint the glass, get some window tint, tint the glass. You can change the location of the enclosure so it's away from the direct sunlight. Or you can just simply adjust the way that you're feeding your leopard geckos. Like I say, I wait for the sun to go down. That's when they know that they can come out quite happily. And then I'll put in some live food. Bang, they go crazy for them. There's absolutely no way that they will feed through the day because they simply can't see the food. And the last one, I feel like I've not actually spoke this one through enough, is the supplements. I can't stress enough the supplements. That's the vitamin and the calcium, along with the insect food. These three tubs are gonna save your reptile's life. If you don't use calcium, if you don't use vitamins, if you don't use insect food, you're not doing the best you can do for your animal. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're new around here, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.